might like, Mrs. Morton. It should be very becoming to you. Oh, yes, Blanche. That's a darling hat. And I've got one that'll be simply adorable on you. Oh, now, Molly, I told you I'm not going to buy any more hats. I promised George to save money. <laughs> when did you promise him that? Yesterday, when I brought home six hats that Molly sold me. <laughs> Mr. Burns will love them. She looked like a doll in them. Oh, Gracie always looks like a doll. You do, too, in this. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think, Gracie? Gracie? I heard you, Blanche. Uh, but even if I thought I did look like a doll, I'm too modest to say so. <laughs> no, honey, what I meant was, how do you like this hat? Oh, I think it's gorgeous. Yeah, I do, too. Yes, it's simply beautiful. But it's not for me. I should say not. No, I don't think so, either. Could <laughs> uh, I speak to you a minute? Oh, certainly. Will you excuse me, please? Mm. Yes, Mrs. Hudson? As long as they don't want that hat, may I try it on? Of course, Mrs. Hudson. Uh, wasn't Helen waiting on you? Yes, but she took my little doggie out for a breath of air. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> Pardon me, Mrs. Hudson, but it goes on this way. <laughs> I like it better this way. So do I. Uh, maybe another color might be even better. I'll see if I can find one. Oh, you've got on the same hat Blanche tried on. Oh, it looks much better on you. Really? Yes. Now that you've got it on, I can see how fat it makes Blanche's face look. <laughs> Your friend should see a doctor about reducing. It's quite a problem. Do you know I took 20 shots before it had any effect at all on me? Oh, well, no wonder you're in here trying on hats. If my Uncle Harvey drank half that much, he'd be in here doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, here comes Mommy's fuzzy little darling. Oh, your fuzzy little darling has a cute little dog with her. <laughs> oh, does baby like Mommy's new hat? What? It's beautiful. Isn't that ridiculous? Yes, but with a big woman holding it by the neck, what else can the poor little dog say? <laughs> oh. <laughs> How do you like this hat, Gracie? Well, that's the prettiest one yet. You know, it's exactly what I had in mind. I don't like it either. <laughs> Here. Let's try this. Now there, that's it, Mrs. Morton. That's an exciting hat. Oh, yes, it is beautiful. But you know, I'd love to see the hat that would excite my husband. <laughs> How much is it? $69.95. Don't want to excite him. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to the Philharmonic to hear the Antonelli String Quartet. Personally, I'm a Louis Armstrong man. I went to a concert about six weeks ago, and I was embarrassed to death. The orchestra came out and started to play, and when they stopped, I applauded. The man in back of me tapped me on the shoulder and said, if you enjoyed their tuning up that much, you ought to love the concert. <laughs> and according to the program, the symphony they played was in three movements. The first one was Allegro, the second was Andante, and the third was me sneaking out of the theater. <laughs> And one night I went to a violin recital with Harry Morton, the A. Yasha Heifetz. Seven dollars and fifty cents a ticket and no laughs. <laughs> and Heifetz had plenty of chances. Came out, stuck a handkerchief in his collar, put the violin on top and started to play. Now if you knew something about show business, you leave the handkerchief there, put the violin here and you get yourself a scream. <laughs> And Harry Morton whispered in my ear that Heifetz was using a genuine Stradivarius. Well, maybe it was. But to me, it looked like any other handkerchief. <laughs> the piccolo player in the orchestra got a few laughs, but it was accidental. He got the hiccups, and it kept knocking his fingers off those little holes. <laughs> but I did learn one thing. How to recognize good music. If you can't sing it, whistle it, dance to it or pronounce the composer's name, it's got to be great. <laughs> What's the use of kidding? If I can't tap my foot or snap my fingers, I don't understand it. I like stuff like, uh, 
Oh, go down the street and buy the school and pat your feet, you step and fool, and strut your stuff and use your kerch and trot your little tootsies on your body of the church. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know how to get out of this recital. Well, I'll go out and buy a jigsaw puzzle and get everybody started on it. And once they get interested, everybody will stay home. And this can't miss. I know a couple that went out on a boat once and took a jigsaw puzzle with them. He got so interested, he didn't know where he was, backed off the boat and drowned. <laughs> she fell off. He had two important pieces with him, and she never got to finish the puzzle. <laughs> yeah, this can't miss. I'll go down the store and buy a puzzle, and that jigsaw will have muzzled, and okay, okay, so I'm not Irving Berlin. Well, what makes you such a happy boy today? Oh, hello, dear. <laughs> Oh, I suppose the fact that we're hearing the Antonelli String Quartet tonight is responsible for my mood. The thought that I'll soon be hearing good music never fails to elate me. You really love it, don't you? With an abiding fervor. Others may find more emotional stimulation in art or literature. But for sheer exaltation, I maintain that nothing can surpass the intricate configuration of a fugue. The mellifluous development of a cadenza or the soaring perfection of massed arpeggios. Does that answer your question, dear? Well, I don't know. It was so long ago, I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> oh, Blanche, dear. Music is part of my heritage. My entire family was musically inclined. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, what wonderful evenings of music we used to have at my home. Dad and I with our violin, sister with a cello, mother with a harmonica. Wonderful, wonderful evening. Well, wasn't that a funny combination? Well, Mother originally played the piano, but Dad persuaded her to change instruments. It's impossible to play the harmonic and talk at the same time. Oh, oh I get it. Well, I certainly hope that tonight's concert does some good to George culturally. Heaven knows he can stand improvement. Well, I'm surprised you want him along tonight. Blanche, dear, I feel it my duty to, to set George on the right path and raise his musical standards. Besides, he's paying for the tickets. <laughs> How do you know he is? Because I had Mrs. Bellamy of the Philharmonic Society deliver them at his house. Oh, Harry, that isn't fair. Why not? Two weeks ago when we went to the theater, I paid for the tickets, and it was entirely George's fault. His fault? Of course. I said, let me pay for the tickets, George, and he was inconsiderate enough to let me. Oh, you, you gotta watch him every minute. Harry, notice anything? Oh, new earrings. Very nice, dear. Very nice. <laughs> oh, pretty, darling. Pretty. Very pretty. You know, Harry, I'm glad you're going to the concert with us. But have we met this girl you're taking with you tonight? No, Gracie. I only met Alice myself a couple of days ago. But she's a wonderful girl. You'll love her. Well, I love all you girls. The only trouble is you change so often that sometimes I find myself still loving an old one while you're loving a new one. Well, Alice is different. She's one in a million. Oh, has it been that many? You see, I sort of lost count. <laughs> Gracie, I meant that Alice is not just an ordinary girl. There's a lot to her. Oh, if she's that heavy, tell her not to wear those little hats that make Blanche's face look fat. <laughs> Gracie, I didn't say that Alice was happy. Hi, Harry. Oh, hello, George. Oh, what are those, George? They look delicious. It's a jigsaw puzzle. Oh, I thought maybe you'd bake some cookies. <laughs> it's a natural mistake. Uh, sit down, dear. All right. Uh, maybe you can suggest something to take some of that weight off Harry's girlfriend. No, no, Gracie, you've got the wrong idea. I, uh, I bought the jigsaw at the drugstore, and I thought putting it together would be a lot of fun. Would you and Harry like to help me? Oh, what is it when you get it together? It's a picture of Washington holding a little hatchet. Oh, I guess he didn't like the picture they took of him. Look at the way he chopped it all up. <laughs> yeah, I guess they shouldn't let kids play with hatchets, but uh, don't let me interrupt your conversation. You go right on with what you were talking about. I'll just put these little pieces together. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Gracie, Alice is not heavy. She has a gorgeous figure, a beautiful face, weighs about 110 pounds. Oh, I'm dying to meet her. Oh, she's an interesting girl. Oh, I imagine she is. You know, I've never met a girl with a 110-pound face. Hey, this is real fun. I've got four pieces that go together. 
I wonder where that other piece is. I'll try once more. Where did you meet Alice? The other night at a buffet dinner. It was sort of a dull affair, and I thought I'd just eat and run. So I went over to the buffet table, and that's when Alice came in. I looked up, and her eyes met mine as I was helping myself to some meatballs. It was like an electric shock hit me. They were so big and blue. Did she say anything? She blushed a little. Well, I don't blame her. Those big blue meatballs must have shocked her too. <laughs> I found the piece. This is beginning to shape up. Uh, what color are Alice's eyes? Uh, uh, brown. Br brown eyes. Oh. Well, that's the color the meatballs should have been. <laughs> Harry, mm -hmm. would you get that piece for me? That piece right there. No. Yeah, it fits. Just put it right in here. Put it Harry, in. we're disturbing George. Come on, let's talk outside. <laughs> Mrs. Burns? That's right. I'm Mrs. Bellamy of the Philharmonic Society. I brought these tickets for the Antonelli String Quartet recital. Oh, I'm sorry you made the trip for nothing, Mrs. Bellamy. The recital isn't being given here. And even if it were, you're much too early. Oh, this is very amusing. It is? Yes, these are for you and the Mortons. Mr. Morton said to bring them here and your husband would pay for them. Well, that might amuse you, but I don't think it will amuse my husband very much. <laughs> George, are you busy? Oh, this puzzle is fascinating, but I could use a little help. I'm stuck right here. Well, uh, not now, dear. This is Mrs. Bellamy of the uh, Philharmonic Society. Oh, hello, Mrs. Bellamy. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Morton asked me to bring these four tickets and said you would pay for them. And that would be $30, Mr. Burns. I'm stuck again. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll go upstairs and make out the check. And, Gracie, uh, don't you and Mrs. Bellamy touch that puzzle. I want to finish it myself. It's loads of fun. I hope you don't mind my saying it, Mr. Burns, but it seems to me jigsaw puzzles are more suitable for children. <laughs> it's been a long time since I was a child. Well, George should have known that. I guess he just wasn't looking at you. <laughs> I'll uh, get your check. Oh, come on, Mrs. Bellamy. Let's go outside. Oh, isn't it pretty out here? Well, thank you. Are you going to the concert tonight? Oh, yes. I wouldn't miss the Andinellis for the world. They have a very interesting background. Really? Yes, the four brothers. Pietro, Pasquale, Lorenzo, and Giuseppe. Raised on a little farm in Italy. Their father knew nothing about music... When they were born, I'm sure he had no idea what they'd turn out to be. Well, with names like those, it's lucky they turned out to be Italians. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also turned out to be musical prodigies. The father realized how talented they were, and he sold all his pigs and his cows and sent them to study with a famous music teacher. Oh, I bet the boys loved that. Oh, of course they did. Well, sure, while the cows and pigs were studying, the boys could stay home and have fun. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, it was the boys who went. Oh, oh. Uh, well, uh, in a very few years, they had all mastered their chosen instruments. Uh, Pietro and Pasquale play the same instrument, the violin. Mm -hmm. um, are they good? Oh, they are wonderful. Well, uh, how does that work? Does one of them hold the violin while the other one fiddles? No, they each have their own violin. <laughs> More than one person on an instrument. Mrs. Bellamy? Oh. Here's your check. Oh, thank you, Mr. Burns. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you both at the Philharmonic, I think. Gracie, <laughs> Gracie. Help me with this jigsaw puzzle. I'm stuck. I can't find the piece that goes in here. Oh. There it is. That's wonderful, you know. They say once you start on these things, you can't quit. Really? <laughs> Gracie, when the Mortons and Harry Von Zell and his girl get here, we'll have to do something to entertain them. Well, I could tell them about the Antonelli brothers. I thought maybe you'd help me get them started on that jigsaw puzzle. Oh, well, that's a very interesting story, you know. 
The two of the brothers learned how to play on the same violin while the cows and pigs went away to school. <laughs> Sounds like we're in for an interesting evening. My sisters, Dusty and Hazel, and I learned to play on the same instrument when we were kids. Really? Sure, the piano. I played on the white keys and Hazel played on the black keys. And Bessie sat on the floor and worked the pedals. That's how you learned to play? Mm-hmm. Well, Hazel and I did, but Bessie forgot how to work the pedals. How did she forget that? Well, you see, at the end of each number, when Bessie stood up to take a bow, she'd bang her head against the piano. And when you get hit in the head that often, you can't remember anything. Sounds like you kids had a lot of fun. Oh, yes. And my mother used to make us go into the garage and practice all day long. We'd get in there hold in the it, morning and we'd practice and practice. The piano was in the garage? Well, yes. You see, we couldn't afford a metronome, so my mother would sit in the car and turn on the windshield wiper. Well, they both work the same way. Sounds like you came from a musical family. Well, of course, you knew that my Uncle Harvey was a great saxophone player. Well, I, I knew that Uncle Harvey was everything else, but a saxophone player? No. Sure. In fact, he learned to play by mail, and that wasn't very easy because he didn't have a saxophone. How did you do that? Oh, well, he'd blow his lessons into an envelope and then mail them to a friend who had one. Yeah, well, I guess he's lucky. Some people haven't even got an envelope. <laughs> Can't seem to get anybody interested in that puzzle. But it was a silly idea anyway. What am I knocking myself out for? So I'll hear the Aunt Nellie's string quartet and I'll probably enjoy them. All it means is an hour's drive downtown and heavy traffic and no place to park when I get there. And then three or four hours of Bach, Beethoven and Harry Morton nudging me every time I doze off. Oh, I got to get him interested in that puzzle. I say, I'm, I'm having such a good time working on this puzzle, I hate to go to the door, but if you'll work on it, I'll go. You don't have to. Come in. Oh, I guess we're the first ones here. Oh, hello, George, Harry. Gracie, I want you to meet Miss Alice Roberts. Hello. How do you do? How do you do? Hello, Alice. So you're Alice. Oh, Harry, you were all wrong about her. She's beautiful. She hasn't got a great big fat face at all. <laughs> no, 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 Gracie, you misunderstood. Well, about... you were wrong about eyes. Why, they're not brown. They're just as blue as the meatballs. Alice, Alice, look, we've got to kill a little time, and there's nothing like a jigsaw puzzle. They're very interesting. It looks like an interesting picture. Yeah, well, if you think that's interesting, I want to show you a picture my Uncle Harvey sent me. Come on. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I was too busy to hang it up. But it's lovely. It's the nicest one Uncle Harvey ever took. Oh, it's a photograph. No, it's a painting. It was hanging in the place where he always has lunch. But you said your uncle took it. Well, yes, when the bartender wasn't looking. <laughs> Alice, uh, here's that piece you wanted to put in. Uh, where do you think it goes? Hello, everybody. Oh, Alice, I want you to meet Blanche and Harry Martin. <laughs> I hope we didn't keep you waiting. Oh, no, we have plenty of time. Well, then, let's sit down. Oh, uh, Harry, Harry and Blanche Martin, I want you to meet Alice Roberts. Miss Roberts, how do you do? You're over here. Look, we have about ten minutes, so I thought... We'd... <laughs> Girls, your dresses are just beautiful. Well, thank you so, George. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what a lovely garden. Yes, would you like to see it? Gracie has done some wonderful landscape. We've got about ten minutes. I give up. Our gardens meet right there. It's really lovely. Yes, it is. But, you know, I'm really looking forward to this recital, Harry. I understand the Antonellis are really great musicians. Oh, yes, indeed. And did you know that Pietro, the first violinist, is quite noted for his pizzicato? Oh, I hope we can meet him after the recital. Oh, yes. Then we can get the recipe. I love Italian food. <laughs> How an adult of presumed intelligence can indulge in such a frivolous and puerile pastime is beyond me. In my opinion, a jigsaw puzzle is a trumpery diversion fit only for those... Hey, this looks like it fits right here in the tree. No, no, that fits here. Yeah? No, I'm wrong. Well, maybe it goes over here. 
No, uh -uh. no, no. This one. Here. It was right in there. Oh, Harry, that's very good. Oh, sure. You know, the girls used to call me Mr. Jigsaw. <laughs> you know why? No, why? Because every time I'd kiss a girl, she'd go to pieces. <laughs> Mary. But why do they call you Mr. Jigsaw? <laughs> Every time I tell this, I forget the answer. You <laughs> should have forgotten the whole thing. Yes. Well, come on, we better get started or we'll miss the recital. I'll go get my coat. Yeah, in a minute. This is, this we'll is very interesting. interesting. Let's move it over well, here, sit down. Here, I had forgotten how much fun. Oh, shoot, sure, when I was... All you gotta do is use the right bait. It's finally beginning to work. Oh, here's one. Oh, George, I don't want to upset you, but if they don't stop fooling with that puzzle, we'll miss the recital. Oh, no, 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 they can't do that to me. I'd rather kill myself than miss that recital. Oh, well, what'll I do, take the puzzle away from them? Oh, no, no, we can't do that. They're our guests, and we've got to be courteous. We just can't go to the concert until they finish the puzzle. Oh? Well, I'll help you. I, uh, I hate to take bows, but there's always one smart one in every family. This goes here, that goes, goes there, and put that there, and put that here, and put that here, and put the ends together. That's the hat here, that fits in there. Now bring the whole oh, thing yes, together, yes. and there we are. Well, all right, now let's all go to the recital. <laughs> Gracie, I can't get over the way you did that. It was beautiful. You said my eyes looked like meatballs. Oh, well, I'll explain later. I can't understand how Gracie finished that puzzle. Well, as I said, there's always one smart one in every family, and it's Gracie. Appearing on tonight's show were Vivi Janis as Molly, Aline Town as Helen, Doris Packer as Mrs. Bellamy, Myra Marsh as Mrs. Hudson, and Dorothy Patrick as Alice Roberts. Hats through the courtesy of I. Magnum and Company. <laughs>